In this fourth installment in our ongoing Prepper Physical Fitness series, I'm going to detail a workout plan that will help you improve your overall strength and stamina. Now, as preppers, one of the core pillars of preparedness is physical fitness. In the last three videos in this series, I defined the reasons to prepare your body, gave you tests to help you determine your physical fitness levels, and provided a clear guide for diet and nutrition. Now, in this video, I'm going to dive into an eight-week workout plan that, if followed, will enable you to make significant improvements to get your number one prep, your body, in peak condition. So let's jump in. Download the free City Prepping Fitness Guide that contains all the crucial information to help anyone achieve their best physical condition explicitly tailored for the preparedness community. This guide is essential to keep you motivated and on track along with valuable resources you're not going to find anywhere else. Download it today by visiting cityprepping.com forward slash fit. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris, and on this channel, we discuss emergency preparedness, aka prepping. There is no greater prep than your physical fitness. Let me repeat that. There is no greater prep than your physical fitness. In video two in this series, we outline the testing protocol that you'll do in your first week, which we'll call week zero. And if you haven't watched that video, I'll post a link to the three videos that precede this one. At a high level overview, in that second video, we broke the test down into three days. On the first day of testing, we had you do some basic physical fitness activities, namely push-ups, step-ups, and goblet squats. On day two, we had you run one mile. And on the third day, we had you hike with your backpack for three miles. Now for each test, I had you record values, which we then used to evaluate in a chart. Now, the goal of that video is to give you a realistic overview of your current physical capabilities. Again, if you haven't watched that video, I would encourage you to go back and do that before proceeding with these workouts. Why? Well, our goal is to make improvements. And without an assessment, tracking progress is hard. Week one, intro week. Welcome to our first week of training. I'm going to walk you through this entire week, providing you with clear instructions. So let's begin. Monday, strength building. Let's start with warming up. We're going to spend roughly 10 to maybe 15 minutes on this part. And each day we work out this week, we'll begin with these warm up activities. I'll detail the warm up routine in this part of the video, and then you can come back in the future to reference it. Now, if at any time during the warm up exercise it's too much for you to do, that's okay. Do as much as you can. We're just trying to get our heart rate elevated and ready. I'm going to post links in the description section to more detailed videos if you want to get more information on each of these exercises. So here they are. Jog in place. I'll do this for 45 seconds, rest for 10 to 30 seconds, do the exercise again for 45 seconds, rest for 10 to 30 seconds, exercise again for 45 seconds, rest for 10 to 30 seconds, and then do the next warm up exercise. Again, remember, you'll apply this same approach to each of the next warm up exercises. Let's move to the next one jumping jacks. Butt kicks. Alternate kicking your heels up and toward your glutes. High knees. Lift your knees high in front of you. Open close a gate. Perform sideways leg swings, opening and closing your legs. You can use a chair to stabilize yourself. Shoulder circles. Rotate your shoulders forward and backward in circular motions. On the first set, rotate them forward. And after resting, rotate them in the opposite direction. After resting, repeat by circling in a forward direction. We're going to be doing more strength building exercises on Mondays. And obviously you can change the day you start, but I figured I would start with Monday. Now, remember, this is not about just getting it done. These exercises should utilize heavier weight and more deliberate movements, focusing on form. Take rest as needed. We're going to do four sets of each of these exercises. I'll post links in the description and comments section for each of the exercises so it's clear how to do them. We covered them all in detail in our second video, along with variations, so you may want to go back and review that video. And for a few of the exercises, we're going to be lifting an object. And when it comes to weight, if you have any, such as dumbbells or kettlebells, well, great, use them. But if you don't, a one-gallon jug of water, a 2.5-gallon water container, a number 10 can of food, or anything you can hold steadily in front of you works fine. So here are the exercises. We'll do four to six push-ups. You can scale as you need it. If you can do more in each set, go for it. Or if you need to reduce the reps, that's okay as well. You're going to want to rest for 30 to 45 seconds and then do another set for a total of four. Four to six goblet squats. Scale the weight you hold in front of your chest as needed. 
four to six ground to overhead. When doing this for the first time, I would recommend a light weight. As you grow stronger, you can increase the weight of the object you pick up. Four to six step ups. You can use stairs, a curb on the street, or a chair. The goal is to increase the weight that you're holding in order to increase your ability to step up with weight. Just be careful when stepping up on a tall surface like a chair. After completing these four workouts, take time to cool down and stretch. Tuesday, jogging, walking. Now, before you start today's exercise, use the warm-up routines at the time shown here on the screen. For this workout, your goal is to jog or run for 20 minutes. The goal is not to stop, but to move at an RPE of ideally four to six. We're going to describe and explain RPE in just a moment. Now, if you're jogging and you need to slow down to a walk, that's okay. The goal is to keep moving. If you've not run or jogged for a long time, it is advised that you try a slow jog, maybe a power walk, or just plain walking first, and then you can maybe bring a friend or let someone know where you're going. Okay, so I just mentioned the term RPE. Let's talk about this. RPE stands for Rate of Perceived Exertion. It's really a subjective scale used to measure an individual's perception of the intensity of physical activity. It provides a way to gauge how hard you feel like you're working during exercise, regardless of the specific metrics like heart rate, speed, or weight lifted. Now, the RPE scale typically ranges from 1 to 10, with 1 being extremely easy, like sitting at rest like I'm doing now, and 10 being a maximum effort, like an all-out sprint or lifting the heaviest weight possible. Now, instead of defining exercise by pace, RPE allows people to decide based on what they can do. So here's a breakdown of the RPE scale. RPE 1 to 2 is very light. In this level of exertion, it feels extremely easy, almost like you're not doing anything at all. For 3 to 4, you're looking at light to moderate. You're starting to feel some effort, but it's still relatively easy to continue for an extended period. Now, 5 to 6 is where we get into moderate. You're working noticeably, but still can maintain the activity comfortably. 7 to 8 is when you're getting into hard. You're putting in a significant effort and starting to feel some discomfort. Conversation becomes challenging. 9 is very hard. This level approaches the maximum effort. You can only sustain this level of exertion for a very short period of time. And then for 10, this is a maximum effort. This is an all-out maximal effort. You can't continue at this intensity for very long. Now look, it's important to note that RPE, again, is a very subjective measure and it can vary from person to person based on factors like fitness level, your age, and individual perceptions. And it's always a good idea to listen to your body and adjust your intensity based on how you feel. Now, after completing these four workouts, you're gonna to wanna to take time to cool down and to stretch. Wednesday, rest day. Today, we're not gonna do anything. Give your body a rest. Thursday, functional fitness. Now, before you start today's exercise, again, use the warm-up routines at the time shown here on the screen. Thursday will be more of a functional fitness workout capacity workout built to make you do higher intensity work for shorter durations. This, coupled with the Monday more strength-based workouts, will give you a more complete fitness build. Today's workout will utilize the Tabata workout approach, which for each exercise we're about to list out, will mean that you're gonna do a total of eight rounds of 20 seconds of working out and 10 seconds of resting, which means you're gonna spend a total of four minutes on each of these exercises. So for these five exercises, that would be a total of 20 minutes. Now Tabata looks easy on paper, but it's designed to push you, which you'll see. Now before starting, get everything together because this is gonna move fast. Be sure to have a stopwatch app or a stopwatch so you can track your time on this. And for each of these exercises, we're gonna do as many reps as possible for 20 seconds. But remember, we're gonna do these over eight sets each. So pace yourself by focusing on good form. Don't overdo it. So let's say for push-ups, you can do five push-ups in 20 seconds. Your goal is to then do five push-ups in each of the eight sets that we're gonna do. Again, I'll post links to videos that detail the proper form for each of these exercises. Push-ups. Goblet squats. Ground to overhead. Step ups. Front plank. All right, so after completing these exercises, let's take a moment to cool down and stretch. Friday, ruck. Before you start today's exercises, use the warm up routines at the time shown here on the screen. 
Now you wanna take a light pack, maybe a stripped down version of your bug out bag, anywhere between five and 35 pounds. And you're gonna to wanna to walk for 30 to 60 minutes. This is your initial ruck. And if you've never rucked, go light and take it at an easy pace. Let's avoid an injury. And be sure to wear shoes or boots with ankle support. Saturday, mobility exercises. The goal today is to stretch and work on our mobility. And if you prefer yoga, go for it. I'll provide links below to mobility exercises that you might find helpful. Sunday. Today we'll do nothing. You wanna give your body a rest. Weeks two through eight. Okay, so we just talked you through the first week. How do you perform weeks two through eight? Down below, we're gonna provide a link to our free copy of our physical fitness guide, which will detail everything you need to do in weeks two through eight. Now, at the time of recording this video, we're finishing up the guide and we'll release it within the next week or so. I'll post links in the guide to videos that clarify each workout we're asking you to do. You wanna map out eight weeks in your schedule to get after this. And my advice is to go easy on the first week, especially if you have it exercise for a while. We're not trying to injure you, we're trying to ease this in. This is gonna be for many of you, I hope, will be a lifestyle of exercises on a consistent basis. Now, remember our discussion earlier about RPEs. I'm 48 and I can't push myself as hard as when I was 20. A few years ago, uh, I tried to work out like I was 20. I bought a home gym during the beginning of the pandemic and I really went after it hard and I ended up with multiple injuries. Now I just focus on form and doing things correctly, which has paid off tremendously. My encouragement is to listen to your body and to ease into things to avoid injuries. So once you finish the eight weeks of training, I recommend you go back and take the test again from video number two in the series. This is gonna help you to determine where you're at after eight weeks of training. And based on the test, you can start the eight week cycle over again to make improvements. Now remember, well, I can't say this enough, this is a way of life. Over the last five months, I've gotten serious about weightlifting again. Uh, I've been lifting on a consistent basis each week, focusing on eating healthy, and I'm seeing amazing results. But it has taken me time to get here, and this is not something I'm doing to get quick results, but this is now a way of life for me. And my body is my number one prep, and I encourage you to prioritize it in the same way because you can have all the gear in the world, but if things go sideways, what your body can do or cannot do will determine how well you will succeed. Now the next video is our conclusion in this prepper physical fitness journey. And I'll post a link here on the screen so you can go check it out, which I encourage you to do so. If you have any thoughts or feedback, feel free to post that below. And as always, stay safe out there.